Hello, everyone. I hope you watched the video on text files, binary files, and CSV files. So those were the three important files that we had to learn in this chapter called file handling in Python. But there's, uh, there are some few, um, few very small extra things that you need to know about this chapter, which I have added up in this particular video. Okay, so let me just share my uh, screen with you. Okay, we have learned uh, ways of opening a file. Okay, and uh, if you remember, let me just recollect the method of what uh, method we have learned for opening a file is we wrote the name of the file object. We wrote is equal to then we wrote the name of the function which helps me open the file. Then I wrote the file name in quotes and I also wrote the actus mode in quotes. Okay, so this was the method of opening a file, whether it was in a read mode or write mode. Okay, now instead of this, there is an alternative method of uh, opening a file and that is by using the keyword with as you see on the screen okay so let me just explain this to you you write the keyword with followed by the name of the function which is open the file name and the access modes remain the same and then you write as file object so when you compare to the previous methods there you wrote the file object is equal to the function open and the parameters of the function which were file name and access mode here we write with the function name, the parameters as file object. In this scenario too, this file object is going to connect you to this particular file. Okay, and using the with method, we are creating a block statement. So everything that you write under the with line, indented in the with line, is a part of the with block. For example, if you see what's written down, I wrote with open sample.txt, that's the name of the file, w, which means the access mode is the write mode. I plan to write something into the file as fout. So the object fout, file object fout, is connecting me to the file called sample.txt. Now, after connecting me to the file called sample.txt, I wish to write something to the file. So what is the line that is written below it? fout.write, hello everyone. Okay, so this is exactly what we've done previously. But here the advantage is you need not explicitly close the file. You've been writing fout.close before. You need not write it because the minute the width block is over or the lines within the width block are already executed, the file will be closed. Okay, so this was just an alternative way of opening the files. You could stick to the previous way or you could write it like this. The only advantage here would be that I need not explicitly write the file object dot close. It will automatically close the minute I'm done with the statements within the with block. Is that clear? Okay, so now let's just see what's the next thing I want to tell you in this particular video is suppose you have opened a text file okay in read mode okay now this file object that you create this file object that you create here can also behave as an iterator okay what does that mean you must have heard this term iterator when we used the csv file also in the reader function but let me just tell you Previously, when how did we read from a text file? We either used read method, we used read lines method, or we used read line method. Okay. Now, instead of using any of these three methods, I could still read the contents of the file using the file object because the file object behaves as an iterator, which means it allows me to loop through each and every line of the file. So it somewhat behaves like the read line function. When we were doing the read line function, didn't we read line in a loop? So similarly, here, the file object behaves like an iterator. So what does it mean? This means you're opening a file sample.txt, which contains, let's say, many lines or single line, doesn't matter. When I say for x in f in, what does x get? x gets one line of a file at a time. 
from the file and then the next line says printed so because fn is an iterator it will allow x to move through each and every line of the file one at a time as it loops and then i display the content of x so x gets the first line it gets into the loop x gets the next line it gets into the loop and this goes on till i can get lines from the file or till the iterator can be looped is that clear? So instead of using read or read lines or read line, you could also make use of this method for reading from a text. I hope it's clear. Okay. Then what is the other thing that I would want to tell you is when we specify file names. Okay. I told you whenever we just specify, like in the previous example, we just saw sample.txt. Now, where is the sample.txt going to be created if you're opening it in write mode in the current working directory? Or if you're opening it in read mode, from where will the sample.txt be read from the current working directory? So if you are in the current working directory, all files that you name while opening the file, just without giving any path, is going to be created in the current working directory okay now let me tell you what you mean by path now when we talk about path there's an absolute path and there is a relative path now what do i mean by absolute path okay to understand this let's say i'm targeting this particular file okay i am targeting this particular file now where is this file there is a file called cards.exe which is in a folder called games, which is in a folder called Ryan, which is on my C drive. My C drive is my root directory. So where is cards.exe? In a folder called games, in a folder called Ryan, which is under C drive. So what's the absolute path of, what's the absolute path of cards.exe is what I'm going to write and show you here. It will be C colon backslash, okay, because that was my uh, root directory, C drive. Then where did I want to go? To a folder called Ryan. So I write Ryan backslash. Then where do I want to go? To a folder called games. So I write games backslash. And then where do I want to go? To a file called cards.txt. So I write cards.exe sorry not txt exe now this is called the absolute path so what does the word absolute path mean absolute path means the name of the file along with its complete path from the root directory onwards okay so if you've understood this let me ask you something what is the absolute path of chapter one dot docs? That means I'm asking you the absolute path of this particular folder, so this particular file, chapter dot docs. So what's the absolute path of chapter one dot docs? Anybody? Okay, I know, I'm sure you guys can uh, definitely find out the absolute path. Now let's just locate it backwards, okay? So chapter1.dx uh, docs is in math directory or folder, which is in notes directory, which is in the directory called Ryan, which is on my C drive or my root directory C drive. So how do I specify? C colon backslash from C, where do I need to come? See, there are two bifurcations, Ginny and Ryan. Where do I need to come? Ryan backslash from in Ryan, you see notes and games. But chapter one is not in the game section, it's in the notes section. So I write notes backslash, then in the notes section, there's again a bifurcation, maths and physics. But where is chapter one dot docs found? Under maths. So you write maths. And under that, you write chapter one dot docx. Okay, so I'm sure you understood what a absolute path means. From the root directory, you move on one step at a time through the hierarchy and reach the file that you're talking about. So when you're specifying file names, in the open method, you could give the absolute path if it is not in the current working directory, but it is somewhere else. 
Is that clear? Okay, so this is about absolute path. Now, what do I mean by relative path? The relative path means with respect to my current location, what is the path of the other one? Okay, with respect to my current location, how can I connect to another file which is probably slightly in another path? To understand this, I have given you an example uh, here. Okay, I am, I am writing the open method in sample.py. Okay, so I'm writing the open method in a file called sample.py. Okay, now where is the sample.py? Let's just look at sample.py is under the folder called programs, correct? Under the folder called my files, correct? Under the folder called Ginny and on the C drive or my root directory. So if I asked you, what's the absolute path of sample.py, you would say C colon backslash Gini backslash my files backslash programs backslash sample.py. Okay, so now I am in sample.py. Here is where I plan to do the coding for the open function. Now, I want to open the file string.py. TXT. Okay, I want to open the file string.txt. Then what can I write? And let's say I'm opening it in read mode. Doesn't matter, no? So I write fn is equal to open, which is the file I want to open, string.txt. And that's it. I don't need to write anything else. I don't need to write the complete path because my current working directory, what is my current working directory is programs. And both sample.py, where I'm actually writing the code, and the text file, which is string.txt, both are in the current working directory, which is programs. So when you want to refer to a file which is in the same directory as the current working directory, then you don't have to bother about writing the path. You could just write string.txt. Okay? But suppose I want to access okay so this suppose i want to access letter.txt okay i want to access this particular file letter.txt from sample.py now just pay attention sample.py is in the file called or in the, under the folder called programs but letter.txt is in a file called text files which is in the folder called I mean, in a, in a folder called text files, which is in a folder called programs, okay? So, how do I specify a relative path? When I have to specify a relative path, then what can I do, okay? So, remember, I'm, where am I currently programming? Still in sample.txt, uh, sample.py. So, what can I write? I can write fn is equal to open. Now, I directly can't say letter.txt. And if I'm opening it in read mode, it would say letter.txt doesn't exist because it doesn't exist in the current directory. So what can I do? I can put a single dot, put a backslash. A single dot refers to the parent directory, which is the parent directory of sample.py. That means sample.py is under which directory? Programs. So the direct parent so the direct parent of sample.py is programs now so dot slash would mean i am talking about the directory called programs but how do i reach to letter.txt from programs i need to go to text files and from text files i need to go to letter.txt so this is how i would be specifying the file name you don't have to give the complete absolute you could give the complete absolute i mean absolute path from the beginning but you don't have to give if you are on the current directory and if this is referred to something of your parent your direct upper folder then you just put a single dot it would mean the folder that contains sample.txt so dot slash would mean the folder con that contains sample.txt in this example being programs, then I'm saying from programs, you go to text files and from text files, you go to letter.txt. Is that clear? Okay. Now, what if, another example, what if I want to access 
data.txt from sample.py. Okay, now sample.py is under programs and programs is under my files. So if you have to go previously to uh, access letter.txt, we just went one level up in the hierarchy. Now I need to go two levels up in the up in the hierarchy. So if I need to go two levels up, up in the hierarchy, what can I do? Let me write it here. Okay. To repress, so I write fn is equal to all those lines are the same. Okay. To represent two level up in the hierarchy, I put two dots and a slash. So two dots and a slash takes me where? To a folder called my files. And where is data.txt directly under my files? So I write data.txt. Okay, so remember, if I have to just go one level up and then get a path, I just put a single dot. If I have to go two levels up, I put two dots and that's it, okay? Now, if you have to access anything else, then it's better you specify the absolute path because we have only a single dot to go one level in the one level up in the hierarchy and two dots to get two level up in the hierarchy. Any other file that you were talking about, you would prefer to give the complete absolute path. Is that clear? So I hope it's understood. So when we were talking about string, I just said string. When we were talking about letter, you can see it on the screen. Let, for letter, I had to go one level up. So I put a single dot, then come to a folder called text files, and then come to letter.txt. But when I had to go to data.txt, I had to go two levels up. How do I go to two? How do I go two levels up? Is dot dot slash. It takes me two levels up, and from there. I come to the file called data.txt. So this is just required is if you're talking about a file which is not in the current working directory, but it's somewhere else. I hope this is clear to you. Okay. For simplicity, I've always been using just the file name to tell you that I'm storing the file in the current working directory, but you could have stored the file anywhere else as well. You can make use, you can use complete path children anytime. But if you think, you know, complete path can sometimes be so long. So if you just want to go one level up or two levels up, you could use the dot method of doing it. Clear? Okay. Okay. And the last thing that I would want to tell you about in this chapter is about STD in, STD out, and STD ERR. Now, what are these? These are like your file objects, okay? Now, referring to the file objects that I created in the previous programs and all the programs that we were doing was F in and F out. But I had to create that file object before I access the file. Here, stdin, std out, std err are all file objects. Now, why do I call it a stream object? Because we have learned a file is nothing but a stream of bytes, okay? So these are all file objects, but they're not going to be connecting me to specific files, actually. Your standard input device is your keyboard. So that's treated as a file. So if you're getting anything from the keyboard, it looks like you are getting it from a file, the input file. Your standard output devices is your monitor, okay? So std in is the file object that helps me to connect to the keyboard. STD out is a file object that helps me to connect to the standard output device. The standard output device is my monitor. And STD ER is the standard error device or stream which helps me to connect to the error device. Error device is also the monitor because in case of an error, where are you going to be displaying that there is an error? Obviously on the monitor. So STD out and STD ERR both are talking about my standard output device, which is my monitor. And STD in is talking about my standard input device, which is the keyboard. Now you might say you've learned so many input devices. Yes, but your keyboard is your standard input device and your monitor is your standard output device. When do I use std out over std err? If I have to just say hello friends, I would probably use std out. 
stream object. But if I have to point out an error that, oh, sorry, you have not entered the right thing or something like that, then I would prefer to use the STD ERR object. Okay. Now, you don't have to create it, I said. Then where are they? They have to be created. They are already created. And where are they created? They are created in a module named as sys. So we have an inbuilt module named as sys. And all these three file objects or stream objects are already created in sys. You don't have to create them like you created fn and fout. OK, now let's, let me compare now std in to fn. Okay, when you open, I was opening, I was using fn while, uh, while I was opening the file in read mode. Now, if I want to read the contents of the file, what did we write? We wrote fn.read, fn.readline, or fn.readlines. Similarly, if I want to read something from the keyboard, what must I use? Now, you all will all say the input function. Yes, the input function is what we have learned in Python, but I also could make use of the standard in or std in stream object as shown. If I write sys.std in, std in is an object of which module? S SYS. And then call the read function. Okay. Now read file, we know what does it mean? That reads only five. So if I've typed in a long sentence also, it's only going to be reading the five characters from the input device. That means whatever input device, standard input device is my keyboard. So whatever I've typed from my input device, it will read only five characters and store it in S. This is equivalent to writing S is equal to input, enter a string kind of a thing. Okay. But in input, we are giving a message also, and we are asking to read from the keyboard. Okay. Basically, they are using the same keyboard devices. Even your input function is actually manipulating on your standard input device, which is your keyboard. Okay, your input function also works the same way. But let me tell you one thing. If you try this on Spider IDE, Spider IDE will not give you any, uh, will not let you read. But if you use it, you know, in Python idle or your basic Python's distribution, you can use it or in the interactive mode, you can make use of it and you can see it. But Spider IDE uh, treats, you know, the terminals or your input output devices not necessarily the output, the output would work, but the input device is slightly different. So it doesn't work on spider ID. But if you have uh, C Python or idle, if you're using idle distribution, then you could probably work on this. And if you display S, it would actually display only the first five characters, what the user has entered. But instead of read, I could use read line or I could use read line. So remember where I wrote fn dot, fn was taking it from a file. This is going to be taking from the standard input device, which is a keyboard. Similarly, when you used open the file in F out mode or write mode, what were the functions we wrote? We used, wrote the write line and the write function, correct? So same thing here, I can make use of the write function. But now remember, when I wrote F out dot write, I was writing to a file. Here, if I write sys dot std out dot write, std out standard transfer it to the standard output device and the standard output device is nothing but the monitor so you would see it on the screen so if you want to display something on the monitor you could write sys dot std out dot write hello there or sys dot std air dot write sorry re-enter the values we normally use though both are going to be you know pushing the data towards the monitor one we use normally if it's a general display statement and one we use if it's if it's specifically some error in some uh, what you say distributions you know what what happens is hello there would display in blue and the uh, whatever you write with the std err displays in red but it's not in all all ides okay but some python ides will display it in different colors to tell you that one is a regular output statement and one is a error statement. Is that clear? So there is nothing to get confused here, children. These are just built-in uh, file objects or stream objects, but they're not connecting me to a file. Instead, they're treating the input device as a file. So it's taking data from there and a monitor as a file. So it's displaying data. To get something from the input device, I, be, I will be using STD in. 
object. And to display something on the monitor, I could either use std out, std err, though both display on the monitor. Their roles are different actually. If it's a general display statement, you write std out. But if it's anything related to errors, it would better it would be better to write std err. And I told you on some IDs, you can even have you know the color change where out will look in blue and the err will look in red. Is that clear? So I hope this is the end of our uh, file handling chapter in Python. And I hope the entire thing is uh, clear to you and you have understood how the file handling in Python works and you are all ready to answer any question that the board paper expects you to do. Is that clear? So all the best. Bye-bye.